Hey guys, thought I'd do a quick video. Um, my channel, I was hoping to get some more FSX related videos up uh, sooner than I have. Um, one of the things I looked at though was uh, my old PC was uh, quite ancient. It was about three or four years old. So for running FSX, it wasn't really in its prime. Um, it struggled a bit with the graphics and as the latest add-ons have come out, it's gradually got slower and slower and slower. So I treated myself to a new PC. Um, it's a self-build. It's the first ever self-build I've done, uh, or certainly the first one I've done in probably 15, 20 years. And obviously technology's moved on an awful lot then over the last few years. One of the advantages of it being a home build, though, is I could choose the components to, uh, to make what I wanted. And obviously FSX is quite processor hungry, uh, CPU wise. So uh, I started there and worked the machine around it. I think the total build cost was about £700. Although we already had the monitor um, and the keyboard and bits and bobs like that. So the main frame, if you like, the main framework, the PC, was about £700. I started with the process, which is an Intel i5 core uh, 4670K CPU. Um, as it comes out of the box, it's, uh, it runs about 3.8 gigahertz, but uh, Intel do a very useful utility, which you can download, called Intel Extreme Tuning, and that allowed me to overclock it to 4.1 gigahertz without really having too much difficulties at all. In fact, it actually runs very stable um, as a system. One of the things I did do is uh, I installed an additional fan, which is an uh, Enemax, as you can see. Um, it's an Enemax uh, ETS T40, uh, their special black twister range. Sounds very impressive. Actually, the cost was relatively inexpensive. I think it was about £34, £35, something like that. Um, plus the cost of the processor itself, which was uh, about £170. Um, you can see it's not too desperately uh, expensive. The motherboard is a, an MSI uh, motherboard. Uh, that is a, you just bear with me, it's a Z87G43 motherboard, uh, which is designed to be capable of overclocking as well. So uh, that combined with the CPU made it a very straightforward and simple build. Got two 4GB sticks of uh, Corsair Vengeance RAM uh, running at 1600 MHz. Uh, just to keep it ticking along nicely. I don't know a great deal about uh, RAM speeds or over. I know you can overclock RAM, um, and I know you can overclock a lot of things in a PC. But I'm not that experienced to be able to go that far yet. Although maybe one day I'll be brave and I'll try. The graphics card in it, because um, FSX isn't reliant on graphics cards. Um, I've got a relatively budget card. Uh, it's a uh, Zotac um, G4750 Ti which was £115. Um, one of the interesting things about the fan is it, uh, sorry, about the graphics card is it doesn't need any extra power. It takes all its power through the main uh, slot. Uh, unlike a lot of modern graphics cards that need extra power supplies and all the, the gizmos and gadgets that go with them, uh, it's a very simple, very straightforward card. Just plugs in, uh, does what it says on the tin, really. Seems to do okay graphics-wise for FSX, so uh, that little bundled can combined really is uh, is the main sort of crux of the PC. Uh, it's got uh, an XFX TS550 power supply. Uh, nothing too dramatic because I'm not expecting to power the world off the uh, off the PC so that should be good. Um, FSX obviously being um, a legacy type program it still needs, unlike a lot of modern programs, a CD DVD uh, ROM drive. Um, so I've stuck one of those in there, they're only 20 odd pounds, something like that. Uh, and then I've got two drives in it. One is a Seagate one terabyte hard drive, uh, which I stick a lot of my software on and my video stuff, etc. Um, but the other one, I've treated myself to a SanDisk 128 uh, gigabyte um, solid state drive. And I couldn't believe how much faster a PC boots up with that. It's quite phenomenal. Um, so, yeah, really happy with it. Um, I've got FSX fired up at the moment. Um, it's got all the sliders right up, and that's uh, just out of Interlaken. Um, so you can see it's a really nice, crisp, clear screen uh, and picture. Uh, it's 27-inch monitor, so it's actually quite big for, for powering something off a PC like this. Um, and then, finally, I managed to get my eBay bargain, uh, which is a Thrustmaster Warthog uh, replica joystick and throttles. Normally retails about £350. Um, I got it off eBay for £100. Uh, it's all working. 
The only thing that's missing is the boxes, the instructions and the CD discs, but these days you can download the drivers from anywhere. So uh, a quick firmware update and uh, it's, it's slotted in perfectly. Uh, the previous owner was even kind enough to uh, mount it on a base, so I've uh, fixed it to the floor and it's, uh, it's there. It doesn't move around, it's lovely to use. Um, Marvellous bit of kit as a joystick with the throttles and the throttle quadrant to match. So yeah, it's all very good. Um, one of the interesting things that most people would probably want to know about, um, I've just unpaused uh, FSX, um, it's quite high in the graphics intensity there and as you can see hopefully it's giving me 100-120 frames per second. So uh, I'm really happy with that overall. Uh, I don't think I could ask for much better out of, uh, out of a, a computer setup with the budget I had. Let's say 170 pounds, sorry, 700 pounds all in. I wish it was 170. 700 pounds all in seems to have got me a really nice setup for uh, FSX. And hopefully over the coming weeks I'll be able to produce uh, quite a few more videos to stick on my channel for you. 